our world and beyond. Space, in partnership with the European Space Agency. We've all been guilty of mistreating our planet, whether it's leaving the lights on or forgetting to recycle a newspaper. But because there are nearly 7 billion of us on Earth, these little bits of thoughtlessness add up. To ensure the future of our planet, we have to monitor and protect our environment. For the last 300 years, we have been satisfied with people going out and collecting information on the environment in their local neighborhood. But we need to know more about it. The planet has fundamentally changed because of human activity. We've entered what's called the Anthropocene. So we are manipulating the planet and how it works. The era of satellites and observations not only is upon us, but it's become an essential fundamental part of how we run our economies and how society really stays together. Here in Copenhagen, the European Environment Agency, EEA, collects data from the ground and from information transmitted via satellites, which have become invaluable when collecting information about the health of our planet. We have one network which is specialised in all the environmental information data collection. We're measuring air quality, water quality on the ground, and we bring that together making sure that the data is quality assured, that it's comparable and useful for combining with satellite imagery. So that is a specific role of EA. The centralising role of the EEA allows missions to focus on ecological issues in a truly global way. The global is the global community who are involved in monitoring everything, air quality, water, the way we transport ourselves, energy. An environment then is a very big word. It's not just simply the plants around us. It's the fabric of how we live in cities, what we do, how we recycle our materials, where we get our materials from. And that's why the global monitoring is so, so important. So satellites help monitor everything from plants to urbanisation. Ten years ago, the European Space Agency, ESA, launched Envisat, the largest observation satellite in the world. Though no longer operational, it paved the way for Sentinels. The Global Monitoring for Environment and Security Programme, or GMES, is being jointly developed by the European Union and ESA. GMES continues Envisat in an operational way. You know, GMES wants to achieve what we have achieved for metrology 30 years ago. So we want to have an operational system which uh, delivers a constant flow of data uh, for many, many applications. It's planned to launch Sentinel-1 in 2013. It will transmit data 24 hours a day in all weathers using radar instruments. Sentinel-2 is a highly developed piece of optical technology which can take precise, high-resolution images of the Earth's surface. Sentinel-3, using infrared radiometry and radar instruments to measure temperatures, will mainly monitor oceans. Here we are really uh, the forerunners. Uh, in metrology we followed the Americans, but in GMES we are the first in the world. And uh, we hope very much that we start next year uh, to uh, deploy the satellite infrastructure. We are close uh, to the end of the development. And uh, then in two, three years, we should have the full system operational in orbit. The work of GMES is essential and has provided valuable insights into human activity. It has helped us understand seasonal variations of shipping routes and changes in vegetation across different geographical areas. Climate change is being almost constantly monitored. GMES's work also improves public safety by providing information about natural disasters like forest fires and floods. The global monitoring program has been welcomed by the Italian Civil Protection Institute in Rome, 
where its satellites are part of the organization's surveillance network. We work with the satellites essentially for forecasting and prevention and also to provide adequate responses to emergency situations. It's essential for the decision makers and for the coordinators to have a chronological view of what's happening. This helps them to make decisions and alert the operational structures on the ground. In this field, the satellite is a strategic tool for action. Satellite in questo caso diventa quasi strategico come, come azione. Maritime security is another area which uses satellites. The Italian Coast Guard has close ties to ESA, so they can monitor shipping along the Mediterranean coast. We had a serious crisis in the Mediterranean Sea due to the war in Libya during the Arab Spring. We asked for more satellite imagery to get a better view of our targets, to know how to better deploy our means of action. Satellites also play a part in managing human crises. During the Libyan crisis and during the first few months of 2011, more than 30,000 migrants disembarked on the Italian coasts. During this time, we needed to estimate and control the boats leaving the Libyan coast. It's true, satellites can't replace everything, but like in Somalia or in Libya, if we don't have the eyes of the satellite, it's like we're blind. From another point of view, satellite monitoring is a unique tool for seeing what or who wants to stay invisible. It's a good weapon against illegitimacy and crime. Satellites also help monitor fishing quotas. And GMES will also be an asset to European industry. A system like GMES is one of the answers to an economic crisis because so when we operate there will be high-tech jobs for many engineers and uh, scientists uh, and then also for industry to produce new products, services where governments uh, are waiting for. This Zeppelin was once at the cutting edge of aeronautics in Friedrichshafen. But now, they're building satellites here. Sentinel construction is divided amongst various businesses scattered across Europe, making it a team effort. We are entering into a strong cooperation to realize these complex satellite missions. The big companies are typically leading as prime contractors uh, one of these big satellite missions. And below them there are a lot of subcontractors from the member states contributing in bigger and smaller pieces to these technological challenges. The European Satellite Monitoring Programme also encourages the invention of new technologies which could put Europe ahead in terms of space. The real business finally will be created in the downstream services. So data evaluation, analysis, providing services to all kinds of institutions on European level, on local, regional level, on even global level and this means a lot of jobs and again very high skilled and this is then not only in the engineering domain but also in the geographic domain, in the social domain, in, in a lot of other non-technical uh, uh, fields of course. Sentinels 4 and 5 are not satellites but a new generation of instruments which will be installed on meteorological satellites part of the UMETSAT consortium, another GMES partner, to monitor and analyze air pollution. But GMES doesn't have a green light yet. 
we need the operational budgets to start the regular operation uh, from 2014 onward. And here we have still a problem. The European Commission uh, has, due to tactical reasons, proposed uh, a budget for GMS outside their budget. And this is in uh, the economic situation in which we are in Europe, of course, a very dangerous approach, especially for an infrastructure where a taxpayer has already paid uh, almost uh, three billion. The idea that it will be funded by EU member states who want to participate in GMES has not been universally welcomed. One of the challenging things is to make sure that funding is in place, not just for one or two years, but in the case of satellite programmes, we're talking 10, 20, 30 years. Continuity comes very much then at making choices. We have to decide, do we want that, or are we going to have a fragmented picture? The danger, of course, is that with fragmentation comes the possibility that the whole thing will collapse, that people will walk away, and that commitment to quality, to evolution, to designing new satellites, thinking about new ways, will actually disappear, and we'll end up with a piecemeal picture which won't deliver what people are really expecting. There's no swan song for the project yet, but the future is uncertain. It could be uh, delayed because, uh, as I said, either member states are not a, find it too risky at the moment to give um, the OK to launch the first satellite if we don't know whether there will be operational budgets available. And uh, I hope that uh, the governments can agree as soon as possible uh, to a solution. So the fate of GMES is now in the hands of the politicians.